What's up everyone, welcome to today's video. Welcome to the Gamer Dad channel. Thank you very much for tuning in. For the longest time, I was probably one of the biggest advocates that we were gonna get a Division Three game. Now, I don't know where many of you have been in the community, but I've been making Division videos since like October of 2016. So I've been a huge Division fan, but somewhere along the line, after we got past Warlords of New York in the Division Two, I started to look at the numbers and I started to look at the potential for what the Division had already amassed and in terms of a community, in terms of an audience. This brought me to the conclusion that it was a senseless enterprise if Ubisoft Massive did not pursue a Division 3 game. Now, at this point in time, there were a lot of doubts. A lot of people said, eh, it didn't seem like Ubisoft was in a position to do so. And honestly, nobody knows, you know, the financial state of, uh, you know, a lot of these corporations, especially being game publishers, being big and being in this season now where the gaming industry is actually, you know, pretty tough to actually go in, you know, to start taking some more risks, right? So somewhere along the line, we were all following, we were all going, you know, just trying to figure out what it, what was going on. And then we found out at the end of one season that, you know, fail out, you know, and all that stuff was going on. And, you know, they were going to go ahead and end the game. This did not necessarily sit well, even though in some uh, investor meeting, they had already said something along the lines of, oh, well, you know, we're going to continue with the division heartland and blah, blah, blah. But apparently it didn't seem like Heartland was going to be the thing that, you know, <laughs> was going to continue the Division, uh, you know, saga. Then the developers found themselves making two, uh, you know, licensed IPs, which I don't know how the Star Wars is, uh, you know, IP version is going to do. But the Avatar one, I don't think it was so impressive. However, it has now come to light in today's day in making this video that there is a Division 3 game coming, which brings me to my video. How much interest is going to be available for a Division 3 game by the time it comes out? This is a question that I want to kind of explore. Now, for those of you who are probably saying, come on, man, we already got a Division 3 game. What are you worried about? Hear me out. Right now, I don't necessarily know the state of mind of a lot of Division agents. If you look right now, yes, there are people who have probably left the game a long time ago who would happily jump into a Division 3 where it announced right now. There is no doubt about that. That's like the core fan base. However, they've done everything in the game right now. There's nothing really left for them to do. No one is saying, oh, come back and rinse, you know, Roosevelt Island with me and Legendary for the nth time. You guys know I like Legendary missions, you know, and I'm not, no one is saying that, right? What we're saying, however, is how much interest can many people maintain while the Division 3 is still in development? And when it comes out, how is that interest pool going to look like? And what is Ubisoft Massive and the publishers, how are they going to build upon that? Because, you know, they started to make these uh, advancements to the Division 2 in terms of bringing year 5 and all that. They kind of made it somewhat short of, uh, you know, too late if you get what i'm not saying they, they you know it's too late i'm just saying think about it though they had gotten into this warlords of new york thing the community was in a sense demoralized after all of the you know hacks and the seven day rollbacks and the scandals of some content creators using cheats to advance themselves and not getting banned and some people getting banned inordinately then from there they kind of moved to say, well, we want to go ahead and close out the franchise. Then they, you know, basically worked on two other games while kind of using a small support team to continue to push the Division 2 forward, not getting content, you know, in a way that was quite regular and bringing that to the forefront of the community. But now it seems like the efforts have somewhat maybe increased or maybe it's still in the same, uh, you know, it's still the same way uh, or still receiving basically similar support. So by the time we get to, you know, 2025, where we're going to get the Brooklyn DLC and whatnot, how much interest are they going to be able to garner? And the question is, we don't necessarily know. However, I think there is a way and a methodology that they can actually garner a lot more interest than is possible right now. It's very simple. The art side of the Division 1 had always been its biggest drawing factor. When I say the art side, I mean when you fire up the Division 1, there's a mood that the game actually has. That mood is the most attractive thing about that game. Gamers love games that represent its world in a beautiful artistic way. If you can't even call it beautiful, 
you have to call it in a way that is impactful. That means the entire world should be telling the player something before the player even has the opportunity to start exploring the controller scheme. That's the division one for you. It does it very well. And I see the developers with an opportunity here going back to Brooklyn. Bring back that art form. Bring back that art style. And I think you're going to garner interest not only from the Division 2 hardcore community, but those who basically somewhat left even after the Division 1. They're going to be, in a sense, that audience and that community, the install base that you already have access to, that's going to come back and eventually enjoy the next Division 3 game. Because I think the Brooklyn DLC, in my opinion, is a is a very strong pivoting point and has the potential to be a you know a very huge hook to basically call to attention people who may be either at some at this point on a hiatus or maybe in a sense maybe they've forgotten about the game i think you'll be able to garner attention not only will you be able to do that you'll be able to get the you know this game back into the new cycle in a different way and I think, the, you know, the roadmap is laid out for the developers. It's laid out for the planners and the marketing team. You got to put that snow in this Division 2 game. That's what you have to do. Put it in this map. Because, you know, people have been asking for that, you know, feel, that flair, all of that. Possibly even drop a survival mode for crying out loud. I mean, all of the parameters are there. All of the, you know, yes, we have different gear and all that. But still, survival never necessarily uh, you know, guaranteed that you needed these gear pieces. You just needed specific items. And it gives the developers, you know, the opportunity to be able to drop a map and drop a mode that are iconic to the Division game in its original form. This is my video. Let me hear your thoughts in the comment section. How do you think audience attention is going to look like when the Division 3 comes out? Do you think the developers would need to do much more than just release the game and market it through regular channels? I think they probably need to start doing a lot more now and drawing this attention as time goes on. Thanks for watching the video. Appreciate you guys' time and audience, and hopefully we'll talk pretty soon in another one. Peace out.